my name is Birdbrain and today we are talking about compositing. So there's many ways to composite lights and shadows in Harmony, from hand-drawn frame by frame to apply peg transformation like I have here, or to using the 3D light shading. And we can also use the animated matte generator to create some lights. But it seems very few people actually know how to use the animated matte generator. So today we are scratching the surface of that amazing node. But first, before I show you how to use it in an actual scene, let's go and study what an animated generator actually is. So I made this scene right here with on one side the animated matte generator and on the other side a drawing with an envelope around it. So the animated matte generator is very similar to the envelope. Uh, you have got a few points that you can move around. However, this is where the similarity ends because the animated matte generator is very different than the envelope deformer. First off, the animated matte generator is created based on your drawing's vector points. If I look at my drawing's vector points, I have one here, one here, one here. And when I create my animated matte generator, it's just a little node, animated matte generator. When I create it and I connect it to my drawing, it will use these vector points as my controllers. Unlike the envelope deformer, which needs to be traced uh, after you've drawn your drawing, you need to like create your envelope. So the animated matte generator is very different from the envelope because the envelope only have one layer of point. But with the animated matte generator, you actually get two points exactly on top of the other. So the red ones are the L-type points. And if I click here, I have some green ones. If I take the green and I make them smaller, right now we don't see anything. But if I go in my render view, you'll see that you can get a cool gradient with those points. So that's what the animated matte generator is mostly for. It's to create some very cool, easy to keyframe gradients. So if I go on frame one and I keyframe it, and I go on frame 20 and I change the value of these points, which I will show you how to manipulate in a moment, uh, that means that you will be able to animate these different gradients in time. So let me just put some tweening in there. So now if I move forward and backward, you'll see that my gradient is changing. And like I said, all of this is keyframeable, so it's pretty cool to be able to do these kind of things with the animated matte generator. And now I'm only using one to show you around the ropes, but if you use it in a scene, you can actually have some very cool effects going on. Now I'm only using it on one side of the hair because it's quicker, but you can have one for one side of the hair, you can have one for the other side of the hair, one for that part of the cape, one for the microphone, one for the cheek, and you can keep adding them, but it's just more work. So if you want to do that, make sure that you have the time for it because like anything that uses this kind of lighting from this small animation, that's also what we see in the Klaus movie making of. It's mostly these keyframeable shapes that you can then add a gradient to. These things look amazing, but hear me when I say they are very, very, very time consuming. So it's not the kind of tool that you want to use for every scene, unless you are making a high quality movie or something. If it's just for a project of yours, it's something that I love to use for a dramatic scene where the lighting is very important or some like highlights in a short film. It's very great for some scenes, but it's not something that I advise you to think you can do for all the scenes of your project. This is like a luxury tool. You don't use that for all the scenes of your project. It goes without saying, the more detailed your animated matte generator is, the more time it will take. If you're doing a very general one, where it's more like the general shape of the body and that you can let the tweening do most of the job, it is a very, very powerful tool. All right, so let's get out of that scene and explore the basics with that scene. So I will create a new drawing layer. This will be my animated matte generator. I'm gonna put it here. I'm just gonna draw a easy shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a heart. So that will be my animated matte generator. I'm gonna go with my contour editor to make sure that I don't have too many points because remember, all of these points, you will need to animate them. So I'm gonna have as few as possible. <laughs> All right, I have my shape. And now what I have to do is just find my animated matte generator, press Alt to connect it. And now it's gonna turn my shape into a white colored shape. And you can then all connect them to the same composite and then just go and put a matte blur to have all of them at the same time change color. So uh, that's how you create an animated matte generator. Uh, then I like to put a peg on it. So this allows me to move it. Now to make these points move, it's very easy. First, you click on your animated matte generator, then you press on show control so that your control can appear. And if you want to move them, you click on the transform tool and you just move them. But before you do that, don't forget to keyframe your animated matte generator. And then if you go to the other frame, oh, and by the way, make sure that your drawing is showing for the whole scene. I always forget that. <laughs> you can press F5 to uh, have it show for the whole scene like that. And then I'm gonna go on frame 10. I'm just gonna move that. And right now I'm moving both points at the same time because if you look in the properties of your animated matte generator, 
you have these icons. This is to move the outer contour and this is to move the inner contour. So if both of them are showing up like that and that your points are on top of each other, well, you're gonna move both of them at the same time. If you don't want to move the outside of your shape, you can click here to deactivate it and then your selection will turn green, which means you will be able to move the inside of your gradient. So now I'm moving all my points one by one. If you want to move all of them at the same time to maybe scale them smaller, you can click on this button, which is called scaling control. And if you do that and you move one of them, they're all gonna shrink at the same time, which is pretty great. And you can also move this dot here to decide from where your things are gonna shrink. If you want to move the points but not really shrink them, you can get your transform tool and go into tool properties of your transform tool. And here you have a button that is called control selection mode. It's the same one that you use to move multiple deformer points. But if you use this one, you can use it to move multiple animated match generator points. Just like that. Very easy. And as you see with the gradient, so it's always going to be relative to the point it is attached to. Um, all right, so that's it. That's just how you move these points. And if you want to move them in time, just don't forget to add some keyframes. And then if you want it to be animated, you can just use this tool here. You can just put some tween in between them and uh, voila. So now I'm gonna show you how to use it on a real scene. So what I did is pretty simple. I just traced a basic shape of the lighting of my hair like that. And now what I'm doing is frame by frame, I'll just make it fit my animation. And trust me, it's way quicker than drawing it frame by frame because then you get the nice gradient and stuff. And sometimes if your frames are very similar to one another, you can just copy paste your keyframes from one to the other. So I'm gonna go here. Since it's very similar, I'm just gonna copy paste this frame here. So you see my points are moving and I'll adjust it so that it fits this frame. You'll see it's very easy. Just click on my animated map generator, make sure I have my transform tool active and I'm gonna show my control by pressing here. And then it's just a matter of going and placing the handles to fit your animation. Of course, I have a scene with lots of details, so it's gonna take a little time. But if you had a simpler design, then it would be even less long to do. like that so it's very very fun to use to create some dynamic lighting like that so it took maybe like 10 seconds for me to do this frame then I can, I can do the other one and the other one and some of them I got it just by tweening it automatically and it worked so then I just put a keyframe on it and it worked great so that's what I did for a couple of frames and it really took maybe five minutes to do this whole thing so when I say it's long it is long but it's just the same repetitive action so it's not complicated it's just sometimes it takes a little while to do but for simple things like this piece of hair, I think it's going to look very great uh, in the end to be able to do that. So now uh, we're just going to cover how it looks and how it's used in compositing. So I'm going to take this frame right here. I'm going to zoom on it. And now we can explore the properties again, but uh, in more details. In the matte output type, you have feathered, you have outer contour. It's only going to blur the outside like that. The feathered is the one that I used before that goes from the outside to the inside. Next, for in the advanced, uh, interpolation mode, uh, you can choose the one that suits the need you have in that particular scene. In general, I tend to prefer dot over the other ones. Uh, you have parametric, you have distance, dot, or none. But uh. And then for color interpolation, now I have it at constant because I only want one color, but you could also have it between two colors. So then I could have maybe my pink go to my white or like change these colors. Uh, but like I said, I rarely put colors in my animated matte generator. Usually I use it to have some white alpha mask that I use in my compositing. And now I'm going to show you how to use it into your scene. It's very easy. Um, so I have it right here, my peg, my drawing, my mat. And I added a grayscale to it so that I can use the alpha of my shape. And then I simply connected it to a highlight node. So I'm using animated matte generator as a mask for my highlight. But you could use it for anything. Instead of a highlight, it could be a cutter. And it said it would cut my thing away. So for like a ghost or for some cool thing going on in your scene, you could use that as well. It's a very polyvalent tool. So, I mean, that's it. The animated matte generator is just a mat that you create and that you can animate with keyframe and gradients. Uh, what you do with it is completely up to you. You can do lighting like I did with my node here. You can use it in a cutter. You can use it for all kinds of effect. I mean, sky's the limit. I just gave you a tool. I cannot wait to see what you're going to do with it. So have a nice day and see you next week.